name's Alex Pico, I'm a staff research scientist here at Gladstone. I'm the associate director of bioinformatics here. And I focus on software tool development, um, online tools like Wikipathways, and also downloadable tools uh, to visualize networks, to visualize large data sets in the context of biological networks and pathways and processes. We're collecting data that pertains to various diseases like heart disease, um, cancers, uh, immunology and virology, diseases, uh, infections you might get. And um, we're then trying to make sense of it to uh, then understand the processes that lead to um, those diseases and different ways of treating those diseases. Um, born and raised California, um, I started out um, with uh, early children's chemistry sets, I enjoyed those. Um, and tinkering um, with electronics and, um, and some computer programming early on. Later in high school and in college, I actually focused on literature and, and music majors actually in college. And um, it wasn't until I accidentally was assigned uh, to an honors chemistry class that I realized that that's where I actually belonged. Um, I, I was supposed to take a basic chemistry 101 that everyone's supposed to take and I was uh, accidentally assigned to this small focused 20 person honors course with a really great teacher and I ended up working in her laboratory halfway through that first semester and found my people there. This UCSF Mission Bay campus um, is um, a really exciting campus to be working on uh, right now. Um, our building on this campus was the second building uh, to, uh, to be constructed um, and now there are maybe 14 buildings on the campus. There's two a year being built. So it's one of the fastest growing biomedical research campuses in the, in the nation. So we do basic research here. So we're not um, at the final stages of developing the drugs that you hear of and that you get prescribed by your physicians. Um, so the basic re research really sets the foundation for understanding the, the mechanisms behind um, diseases and processes that treatments get developed for. Um, and so there's sort of an indirect step there, but that basic research um, also helps in um, ways that aren't predictable. So when you're at the later stages and you're trying to make a target drug for a specific um, a disease or population, you have one goal in mind. With the basic research, it's much more open-ended, so there's the potential for um, having uh, effects that you don't have planned uh, ahead of time, and that's how most of these things actually end up happening. Yeah. Okay, I uh, for my work in particular with developing tools, um, they then go out and are used by thousands of researchers that then each have their own research agendas. And so uh, the work I'm doing is uh, spreads pretty quickly uh, beyond uh, the ideas that uh, I alone or my group alone might have. The tools we're building um, have a focus on collaboration and data sharing. Uh, so they're all um, open source uh, code and they're all open access uh, data wise. And so uh, those are relatively new concepts for basic research science or maybe they're being rediscovered by basic research. And so uh, that's one way I'm uh, trying to transform the culture of research to be more open and to be more, um, more of a sharing uh, economy basically. Launching a piece of software that's then used by a lot of researchers uh, around the world is really satisfying. Um, and so we have a couple projects uh, that are being uh, downloaded on a daily basis by hundreds of people. Um, and it's um, really gratifying to see uh, those projects um, um, being useful in the hands of researchers. And the other aspect of it is uh, training uh, new scientists in my group is very, very rewarding, seeing them uh, develop as researchers in my group and go on and take other positions. You know, if it's something you find uh, interesting, if you're, um, if, you're, uh, if, you're, if you're driven internally or when you hear about uh, science articles in the medical field that are exciting, I definitely encourage you to dig deeper, um, you know, try to read uh, the papers behind the news articles and uh, see what questions those raise and uh, find uh, mentors early on that you can go and ask questions, follow-up questions and you know, do those answer answers and do the new questions that pop into your head 
do those get you excited? Um, if if so, then you know those are those are the right ingredients for a, for a good career in biomedical research. Follow what interests you. Um, go after the things that you feel like you have skills in or that you want to develop skills in. Follow, do the things that interest you um, in the short term, and uh, those will open doors and build into uh, new opportunities. The path in my research career has been uh, filled with a lot of uh, serendipity um, uh, steps where uh, they weren't planned ahead of time. And so um, uh, I want to worry about those obstacles. Thank you.